In the criminal justice system, the people pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address, and men who don't care are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, your poison, your trouble, your bad news. These are their stories. All right, let's talk about the House GOP pushing deep cuts to federal law enforcement. Hmm. Do we want that? No, I we need fe- the feds. Don't we need the feds? Republicans are putting forward a spending bill that would cut funding for federal law enforcement. They are trying, it seems, to find a way to defund the special counsel that's prosecuting uh, pres- former President Trump, uh, Jack Smith. But they can't quite make that work. So they're pushing these deep cuts to federal law enforcement. I don't think that's the way to go, but that's that's kind of what they're doing. Um, did you? I don't know if you saw the story about Keith D, but the he's the guy who's accused of the murder of Tupac Shakur, and he's going undergoing trial or the lead up to the trial. He is accused of orchestrating the drive-by shooting in 1996 that took the life of rap icon Tupac Shakur. He has been denied bail by a judge in Las Vegas who is using this statute that's called a Slayer Statute Law that prohibits convicted killers from uh, profiting from their crime. The judge denied the request by Dwayne Keefe D for the release to house arrest before the trial in November, saying he failed to prove that his bond was obtained through legal sources. He uh, got the bond by from this guy named Cash Jones. And Cash Jones also goes by the name Whack 100. So he gets 75 grand, uh, 750 grand from WAC 100 for for bail. The deal was revoked, though, after the judge went looking into the source of the funds. How did WAC 100 get the 750k? So they say it's a gift from business accounts, but they have no contract, no financial agreement in place. And the prosecutors say that Keith D., is likely getting benefits from retelling his story about the killing of Tupac Shakur. As a result, they say that there would be a benefit from that. And the benefit would likely go to pay the bond company as well. And so this may be a fraud on the court, is what they're saying. It's an illegal benefit profiting from his crime. So no bail. He's got to stay in jail on the lead up to this trial they, they really went after this. They dug into it. They played jailhouse phone calls between these two men, uh, w- during, at which point uh, they said there, the comment was made, you got to remember, this S can set you up for the rest of your life. I'll get you out, and then we'll sit down, and we'll talk about all of that. So about how they would profit from the story. Not allowed. Can't do it. So he stays in jail. You remember the story in the Bay Area of this father who was on Highway 1 in the Half Moon Bay area. Is it the Tesla guy? Yeah, undergoing this this mental crisis and drives his wife and daughter who and himself off a cliff, smashes the vehicle down below. He's a radiologist. He's accused of trying to kill his family. The judge and the court deciding that instead of going to trial, he should be given mental health treatment. So this is attempted murder. It is is just luck that his family survived this. They were badly injured, but they were able to survive this crash. A lot of people who go careening off the side of Highway 1 do not live. But no jail for him. And his wife was... I remember a couple months ago, his wife came out and said, please don't put him in jail. He needs help. He doesn't need to be behind bars. So even her, the the victim in this case, wanting mental health care instead of jail. The district attorney in San Mateo County, Steve Wagstaff, 
said he's really disappointed with the judge's decision. He said um, that, uh, yeah, that he's he's not happy with the way this is all going. The the defense attorney for this man, his name is uh, Mr. Patel, Dr. Patel, Darmesh Patel. He's a 43-year-old doctor. He said that it's important to understand why we're here, that not everyone who commits a crime is a criminal. There's no question it's a very serious case, but he said the law encompasses this very situation, that Dr. Patel does not pose a danger to the community because he'll be under an intensive psychiatric treatment program as well as monitored with a GPS bracelet equipped with a siren. And again, his wife said she doesn't want him prosecuted, and she testified to that. She said her children miss their father and they want him to come home. This is a guy, allegedly, who just tried to off you and your kids by driving off a cliff. She's got a lot more patience and forgiveness than I would. I'll tell you what. Uh, I mean, spend, imagine yeah. imagine bringing that back. Oh, you remember that time dad tried to kill us and, you know, drive off a, a cliff, you know? See, that was a I, rough year. <laughs> I get that there's love, that you love someone and you want them to get help. But I feel like your first duty as a mother is to protect your kids. How the safety can you, of your kids, right? And right. The, you the, have to protect the, your look children. Look the car. It's great. Always put the kids first. So how do you trust this guy, even after he comes back from psychiatric treatment, to be around your children and not try to damage your kids? You, you can't. You can never trust him again. I mean, I could it's never trust nothing him like again. If he had all these problems and he, like, I don't want to say he should have done anything by himself or at mm -hmm. all, but, like, he would, if, if he was going through something, why does he have to bring his family into it and drive off the cliff? Right. I think that's the, the crime into it. Like, sure, yeah. if he's, if he wanted to decide to do this on his own, then that's fine. But um, he tried to involve his kids and that's, that's not okay. Like, imagine, like, I'm going to go out to the grocery store. Right. And you watch the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Carol calls it Stockholm Syndrome. I, I, I don't know. Um, and it's maybe it, that, uh, earlier he, here, I'll start. I we could read that. I'll it's let you do that. To, yeah. Take it to the Supreme <laughs> Court to let him off and blame the family. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I don't agree with the, it either. And while I get that he needs help and mental health care, I, I just, um, I think this wife has seen it the wrong way. And I think you have to... Um, you should pay for for hurting your family. Yeah, like maybe this. like after they Don't. rehabilitate him somehow, he serves some time. Know. You have to be punished for doing something like this. It's it sets a a weird precedent that you know anyone again. It's always that weird gray area where you could claim mental whatever, mm -hmm. and this is a, another instance that it worked. So, I mean, it's clear that he's he needs some help there. So, uh, but speaking of people trying to hurt their families. How about this lady? This is a woman from Lebanon, Missouri, and she likes Pinterest. She goes on Pinterest. Apparently there she found on Pinterest how to poison your husband. Whoops. Yeah, she's accused of poisoning her husband's Mountain Dew. He had a he liked to drink Mountain Dew. He had the 2 liter what? bottle of the Mountain Dew at the house. According to court documents, Michelle Peters is her name. She's 47. She was arrested for first degree assault and armed criminal action. She's currently in jail. No bond issued for her either. She uh, <laughs> apparently tried to put Roundup in his Mountain Dew. He drank a lot of Mountain Dew. He had several videos of her, allegedly, handling Mountain Dew and grabbing the weed killer at the same time. He said he noticed his two liters of Diet Mountain Dew had a strange taste. He continued to just go ahead and drink it on up anyway. After a couple of weeks, he started having symptoms of a sore throat, coughing up mucus, uh, gastrointestinal issues, vomiting, nausea, etc. Which is scary because we know that Roundup. I mean, it's been the center of cases where people have, you know, accused the company. What is it? Uh, Monsanto? Who makes Monsanto, it? yeah. And yeah, that's just makes even being exposed of cancer, to cancer, right. Even, being, even sticking your hand in a bucket, right. <laughs> Here he is drinking it up. Uh, his wife told him that he was sick 
uh, and he, that he probably had COVID and that he needed to stay away from the grandkids, he told police he suspected she was going after his half a million dollar life insurance policy. He had another video of her handling Mountain Dew and a bottle of insecticide. So she's interviewed about these incidents. She explained she was mixing the soft drink and apparently admitted that she put insecticide in her husband's Mountain Dew bottle, thinking that it was Roundup. Wait, what? She told investigators her husband was selfish and they had serious relationship issues. You think? She said she was mad at her husband because she had thrown him a 50th birthday party and he just wasn't appreciative enough. She said she didn't mean, she did it to be mean to him. Okay, lady, that's more than being mean to him. That's killing him. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? Like crazy. So there's a, a review of the bail hearing set for July 2nd. I don't think she's getting out. That gives, uh, that gives I'm going to poison my husband type of uh, vibes. God, saying imagine. He wasn't appreciative. And that's got to be a weird uh area and weird weird place in pinterest to find that i always think of pinterest as like birthday Cute stuff. ideas right birthday ideas and crafts things you'd like to decorate ways you'd like to decorate the baby's room like exactly. these this is pinterest you know great <laughs> ideas for treats to bring to the classroom to make you look like the creative mom not ways to kill your husband Okay. How to poison the Mountain Dew without making it look like you poisoned it. Hey, you know, Albert, <laughs> Pinterest has a little bit of love for everyone. Maybe I haven't, there. I, maybe I haven't reached that area of Pinterest. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's talk about this very costly middle finger. Uh, this is a story about this trooper who is really upset because he 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 arrested this guy. Um, he gave me this guy. Let's go back. This guy was on the roadway and he flipped off the cop and the cop was pissed, did not like that at all. So the man is charged with a crime for giving the state trooper, this is in Vermont, the middle finger. This is back in 2018. And the guy sues saying, you can't arrest me for giving you the middle finger. That's not breaking the law. So the state of Vermont is now on the hook for $175,000 to settle a lawsuit on behalf of this guy who was charged with a crime for giving the state trooper the middle finger. The lawsuit was filed by the ACLU of Vermont on behalf of Gregory Bombard of St. Albans, Vermont. There he is. He is not. This is the word from Mr. Albans. He is not happy. So. He said his First Amendment rights were violated after an unnecessary traffic stop and then a retaliatory arrest for flipping off the cop in 2018. The officer stopped the vehicle specifically because he believed this man, Mr. Bombard, had showed him the middle finger. Uh, Bombard denied that, but says he did curse and he did display the middle finger once the initial stop was concluded. He was stopped again and arrested on a charge of disorderly conduct. His car was towed. He was put in jail for more than an hour. He was cited to the criminal court. The charge was eventually dismissed. And then the ACLU gets involved. He's like, I'm suing. This is the worst. You can't violate my rights. Under the settlement signed by the state of Vermont, and Mr. Bombard this month, they've agreed to pay him $100,000 the ACLU gets seventy five thousand dollars. The foundation for uh, the, the foundation rather gets that money as well. They say the client is pleased with this outcome. This incident should never have happened in the first place. That police need to respect everyone's First Amendment rights, even for things they consider offensive or insulting. Now, I have to say, if you flip off a cop, is that wise? Do you expect that when you piss someone off like that, who has a badge and a gun, that it's going to end well for you? What about who was ever, was no one taught to be respectful 
you know, you're respectful to law enforcement. That's how I was raised. Now, there are people who say, yeah, well, Gim, you're white. Of course, you'd be respectful to law enforcement. You don't have anything to fear. But this guy's white. I certainly wouldn't go around flipping off cops and expecting that things were going to turn out well for me. Anyway. Yeah, they're a little more inclined, though. Like, it's the right neighborhood and the, the type of person that who would even try to attempt that. I wouldn't even imagine trying to do that. <laughs> no. But... Is it against the law? You know, you could say, and he did say that this is my opinion. Uh, this is my First Amendment right to free speech. It's not against the law to wave the middle finger around. You and can't arrest over, me for right? that. The, the, the cops are going away. He, he did it after. I mean, he's free to do whatever he wants. You yeah, know? that's what they say. Although, I, you know, you I just don't think out of it. So not a wise decision. Me- yeah, if you were to tell me I could flip the bird to a cop and get a hundred thousand dollars, it might be a, you might take the long way to get there, and they might try to take you to court a couple of times. No, and they might dismiss, dismiss it, thinking that this is ridiculous. Like, and they did. I, I probably would take that a hundred thousand, Kim. John says you're gonna have a lot of copycats out there. I don't think so. I mean, because you don't know. This time the guy gets pulled over. Next time they find a. Maybe I'm thinking of too many cop movies. Next time they find a way to, you know, we thought he had a gun and all of a sudden, you know, you, you're, we thought we saw the glint of a knife and then you end up in the hospital with a bullet wound. I, I don't know. Um, Ricky O'Bear says, unlawful to stop me for flipping the bird. Unlawful is evidenced by the decision in his favor. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think I would ever do that. No matter whether I thought the cop was, you know, pulling me over for, for no reason or, you know, I, I just don't, I just can't I imagine giving the, flipping the bird, like maybe to my friends, cat, like in a, in a very friendly way. Like I, I see them walking across the way, I get their right. attention and they're excited to see me. Then they flip them the bird, maybe something like that. <laughs> Never to a cop though. Never to Never. a cop. Well, He's I hundred hundred thousand dollars richer, apparently. That is law and disorder. Tune in again next time for more Law and Disorder on the Mark Thompson Show. All right, that's it. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.